Okay, just woke up. This is Denzel, New York. And uh, I've been thinking about this this uh, ugly dozer and I'm not sure how am I gonna unload it and then yesterday my phone rings and I see it's a Canadian number and a guy says Sergey I'm watching your videos yeah I see somebody the, the guy Mike who was helping me he was he was uh, he was pointing to this side that something was leaking here. You see, so it's leaking over there somewhere. And he and he and he said, "You see this?" He showed me this, and he says, "You see, like the bolts are new on this thing." So he says they were doing something here, but over there, and you see, this one is not leaking. But on that one, it's leaking. <laughs> yeah, and it's oil. So... So that's kind of like a differential, right? That's like the final drive. And I did not see this when we were loading, but I saw this lots of dirt in here like oily dirt it's probably some kind of a seal like where is it coming from I think it's coming from under these bolts And so yeah, my phone rings and the guy says I watch your videos and he says, Sergey, I am a retired cat mechanic. I've been working on these DA dozers for many years. And he says, chances are your problem is a lack or low level of hydraulic fluid. And I'm like, okay, I'm listening. How do I check the level? He says, go to the back where the seat is and raise the seat. And you will see a very long, very like a pipe. And he says, you'll see uh, the stick in there. And he says, it's about two meters long. And he says there'll be words on it. Like safe to start. Something like that. I don't see anything. See that's the the problem. He said it would be about six feet. Oh, okay, there is something here. Uh-huh. Fool is here. Okay, fool. Four hundred liters, man. So, <laughs> so I sent an email about this to uh, to the customer. I said we might need some hydraulic oil, and uh, and the uh, the mechanic said use SAE ten. So I said, what kind of oil is this? Engine oil, transmission oil, hydraulic oil, and he couldn't answer my question. Okay, you see? Well, it is, actually, it's not too bad, look. But it, it is, it's probably somewhere here. Yeah, it's not, because he was saying that this, these dozers, they have a valve in there. And if there's not enough oil, then there's not enough pressure to open the valve. Yeah, so it's definitely not full. It's like all over the place. And so if there's not enough pressure to from the oil to open that valve, then 
then these shifters will not stay in position. He says, that's what it's designed for that. And I ask, I said, okay, if it's low, how do I refill it? He says, there should be a thing. And I see what he meant, but I mean, look at this. I don't have this wrench. I don't have a wrench like that. I could probably ask guys at the at the truck stop shop. Because yeah, you see this is that's what's moving, right? Yeah, I'm pretty sure it just needs oil. It needs oil. But it needs a heck of a like you see, it says 400 liters. And I just watched the video on YouTube where the guy was starting a pretty much the same looking D8 they found somewhere in the field. And um, and that's one of the things they did. They brought a bunch of oil with them. Wow, that's a big leak. So something is leaking there, so they have to fix that. But for me to move it, right, I have to refill it. But I don't want to refill it now because it'll just go out, right? But at least this means that the oil is unfrozen, you know? Because now it's very warm. It's probably, I don't know, plus five, plus seven Celsius. Much warmer than when we try to start it, but. Oh boy. All right, I am finally ready to leave the truck stop over here. In the... Hold on. Where's my face? Over there. Yeah, just Dansville, man. It took me a while, basically. I did that video, right? I went to look at the where the dipstick was and stuff like that and then i saw that le leak and then i called the uh, the owner that customer that was with me and uh, at the auction i said hey um i went across the street to advanced auto parts here in dansville and i said uh that old mechanic i talked to on the phone said look for sae 10 or uh, I translated that online it was ISO 32 and I went in, in there I said guys I need some hydraulic oil for a dozer with these numbers and they gave me they gave me two pails and then I said do you have any rags to something cheap to clean clean the the spill on my trailer and they said the best way is buy that bag uh, oil absorbent i said how much is that like a huge bag you know <laughs> 100 kilos no i'm kidding it was probably like 10 kilos or 20 kilos he said oh that's only 10 bucks man so the the absorbent for the oil is cheaper than buying uh shop towels because those were 14 bucks 14 and we're talking us right because i'm in the states now so it was 14 bucks for one roll of shop towel i said hey i'll take <laughs> i'll take 10 dollars over 14 any day of the week and so the the customer says okay give me 10 minutes i'll send you uh i'll send you i told him i said each pail is uh, 60 bucks it's a five five gallon us pail so i bought i said we we I saw a video online where a guy was bringing to life an old dozer just like this one, the one, the one that did not work for like 20 years. And I saw, I saw what they were doing there. Um, and so it's 60 bucks per pail, 120 US, so 150. And I, I didn't tell him. It was too late to tell him about the the bag. So I just bought, I bought the bag with my own money and 
I took my truck. I left the trailer, took my truck with the neck, that advanced auto parts there in the distance. A very nice guys over there, very helpful. They gave me a cart. I loaded these two pails and the sack, the bag with the with the absorbent. Moved it to my truck. And also while I was there waiting for the for the customer to call me to call me or send me the money. Actually before that, I went and got a slightly cheaper fuel than uh, T8, it's uh, 391 US a gallon. Over there at Quickfield, it's 379. And I tried to use my Quickfield, I have the, the only card, like bonus card I have, I threw out all the rest, like Pilot Loves, I don't have room in my wallet, but I uh, the only one I have is Quickfield for this station. And we try to use it, but she said I was supposed to get like three cents a gallon extra, but I did not see it. I don't know. Oh wow, check this out. The guy broke down with all the cars and stuff. That's not good. Oh, and yesterday all of a sudden I had to check engine light. And now I knew exactly what happened. Oh, and I forgot to check my... Uh, Forgot to check my oil level today. But basically this truck, when the oil is very warm, because it's 10W30, I see the pressure, you know, when I'm idling. Let's say I stop and then I uh, idle before I shut the engine off and the pressure fell to like about 20 PSI. And I know the engine does not like this. I think it even dipped slightly below 20 PSI and then boom, right away the check engine light came on. And I look at the messages over here, nothing, no messages, you know, no faults. Uh, yesterday I logged online, I have that uh, PECA solutions, right? I have the active subscription. I can see, I can see my, all the faults, but no active faults. And so I thought, I said, okay, I think I know what it is. And so I didn't let the engine to, uh, to go below that. Like I would keep my RPM slightly higher. And then this morning I wake up, check engine light goes on when you turn the key and then it disappears just like it's supposed to. So just a fluke. So I just probably need to add a little bit of oil. Or maybe the you see it becomes colder, so I really want to switch to this uh, 5W40 synthetic Rotella T6. That thing, that's rattling in the back, that's my uh, pails with the oil. I didn't have anywhere else to put them. And so yeah, the guy yesterday was super helpful, that uh, old uh, mechanic. I tried calling him today, he does not answer his phone. I wanted to ask him because I went to the dozer and I see, so there's a fuel tank, right? Right behind the seat. And to the right, to the right of the seat, like when you're sitting on your right hand side, there's a big tank and it says hydraulic oil on it, on the cap. Like it's very hard to read because that cap is, you know, 50 years old, but you can still see hydro oil, you know? You can still read parts of the words. And so I wanted to call him to ask if that's where maybe you put the oil in for the transmission. But he was not answering, so I called my uh, Caterpillar, Caterpillar dealer in uh, Cambridge, in my, in my hometown there in, in Canada. And those guys are usually pretty nice. Uh, because it's a small dealer and so I called the I called the main phone number she says yeah where what can I who I can uh, who you want to talk to I said can I talk to the uh, shop uh, that deals with heavy equipment because they have two shops they have one for trucks and one where they fix and repair you know excavators dozers wheel loader stuff like that and um, and some guy picks up the phone 
and was very patient with me. I asked him a couple of questions. I said, guys, I'm from Cambridge. I'm moving this old ugly dozer to US. Can you please give me uh, just a couple of tips? And so basically what I, was, I, what I asked him, I said, that big tank, maybe that's where I put the, the, the oil? He says, no, <laughs> that's for the hydraulics that operates the blade and you know, all this good stuff. But that's not for the tracks, not for the transmission. I said, okay. And uh, while I was asking, why I was asking that, because the, the filler, the filler cap has an Allen wrench uh, thing in there. You cannot just take it off with the regular, with the regular uh, wrench. And that's why you saw me, I, I parked there near the shop. I went inside and I asked the guy, I said, can you loosen the cap if you have this Allen wrench? I'll pay you. And uh, the stern lady at the counter says, our minimum labor charge is $56. I said, and I, I was getting angry with them because there was a line up there. I said, okay, I'll pay you $56. Just loosen the darn cap, okay? The guy comes out. No, she says, okay, go inside the shop, talk to the guy to see if he has, if he can do it, What if you, if, if he can do it. I go inside, I talk to the guy, and he shows me different uh, heads for his Allen wrench, and they are like this. I said, no, it's definitely bigger. It's like one inch. And I said, you wanna see? I said, it's, it's a cool dozer. So I persuaded the guy to come out. We climbed on the top, I lifted the seat, I showed him the filler cap. And he says, yeah, that's the, the proper, that's where you put the oil for the transmission. So now I, I know exactly where, where to put it. But he says, if you cannot open it yourself, because I said, maybe I can just use a you know regular wrench, try to grab it inside like this. He says, if you cannot do it, what you can do is you can find a small funnel and, and add some oil through the, the, the tube where the dipstick is, but I was nodding, yeah, I understand, but that, dips, that dipstick tube is, I don't know, uh, eight millimeters in diameter. Like, imagine you have, I have two pails, five gallons each. It will take a day to fill the transmission through that tiny baby, you know, tube. What the heck, why is my truck doesn't want to drive today? I just changed my fuel filter yesterday. So I have a brand new filter, but 10 microns. And we are at 30 PSI boost. And I know this thing is only 58,000 pounds. So my gross weight is only 118,000. What the heck? Let's see, some of these are pretty bad actually. So this is I-390. And coming out of the... Um, Dansville truck stop it's a couple of very big hills so it takes like I don't know five eight miles to climb to the top and then it starts going down again but I don't have a hundred thousand pounds I don't have hundred twenty thousand pounds I don't know what's going on maybe it's just cold because I see my uh, my uh, Front drive axle, the temperature is uh, at zero. My uh, rear drive axle, the temperature is at zero. My transmission, the temperature is at zero. Even though I did some driving today, but I just went empty basically, right? Across the street, it didn't warm up. And today is December 2nd. My mom turned 85, 85. So I called her. And and so nine o'clock here, it's about five o'clock in the afternoon in Moscow. And she never can understand, she never can remember my uh, my time difference. So, she, so, so I call, I says, hey mom, happy birthday, this is Sergey. And she says, oh, Sergey, you, you're not asleep yet? And I'm like, Mom, you're always confusing. I said, I'm behind you. Like, it's basically night in Russia. It's morning here on the same day. 
and she says well I don't like that town I, I that's why I, I don't want to remember I don't like the town that took my son town like she means you know I don't know Tor Toronto or something right so she doesn't like she does not like Canada and that's why whenever I go there it always kind of like surprises me that my family shows zero zero interest in this country you know like you would think right a guy let's say I'm a, I'm I live in Russia right a guy comes from Canada to visit uh, I'd be interested you know I'd be asking him questions you know like how's life over there you know how this works how this works you know what are the prices like stuff like that what what kind of what cars people like driving you know but these guys zero zero questions each time and so I finally figured out so they they just they don't understand they don't understand why I moved to Canada they have no idea what's going on here so they don't give it you know a darn my brother said um, uh, some months ago that the, the only place he would want to ma maybe visit is California just to see you know the ocean the beach maybe California like he doesn't give <laughs> a rat's ass about Canada uh, and so yeah that's the reality in my family so my mother thinks that Canada took her son away and she totally she doesn't understand why I moved away why I like Canada you know well you asked for that matter right because I couldn't I couldn't get the visa to US right like my if I could go to US that would be my my first uh, you know destination from Russia but unfortunately even back then uh, US was pretty much impossible to to immigrate to like legally unless you know how to swim you know and survive the desert heat but of course I'm kidding that's the legal way but I wanted to do it legally and unless you're a lawyer a doctor uh, a famous athlete or a singer performer you cannot get a visa to to US and once I became a truck driver in Canada that's another thing that the, the whole industry I don't know if people uh, like if you guys in the States know this but the the profession of a trucker of a professional truck driver does not qualify for that uh, what is called H1 H, uh, B1 visa like if I'm let's say I'm a student in Toronto and I want to be a lawyer but I want to be a lawyer in the States I want to live in the States so I go to the University of Toronto I study law I get my degree then I got in my Zaporozhets you know Hyundai Sonata I drive down south to US let's say I want to be in Chicago so I drive to Chicago okay speed trap adding speed trap to the map all right we got you and so I drive in my Zaporozhets to Chicago and I call a couple of local law firms you know, and I say hey guys I know I have a shortage of uh, good-looking uh, rookie lawyers you know I'm ready to work 140 hours a week if you give me a chance but I need a visa I'm Canadian and they say hey no problem you know they check your references right so they like you they give you a visa and you just have to renew it I forgot either every year or every three years but you have a residency permit it's like a green card the only thing is that you are allowed only to work for this firm right you if you leave basically your visa you have to change your visa to another company you cannot just you know stop working and but that's your legal way to to work in the states but again this only applies to to professions that are on this special top secret list only known to uh, top officials on the CIA KGB and FBI and that list to open that list it requires three signatures simultaneously if the one guy signs one second later that list is not gonna open on the computer so anyway it's a it's a whole different ballgame but Canada was easy Canada back then in 95 had a system right I, I mentioned this before where you don't need to have a job you don't need to have a job offer 
from Canada you just need to have a proper you know um, assembly of qualifications like age uh, knowledge of English um, you know you have like 5,000 bucks that you have 5,000 bucks to your name Canadian if you're single I think it was uh, 10 if you're a family something like that and then you you know it drags for, like, for a year and then they say welcome to Canada and they give you a basically a green card which is the residency permit right and so I am forever grateful to Canada for welcoming me to this second home where Russia always treats its citizens as enemies like you see now I'm going through this procedure where I have to confirm my Russian citizenship even though they know perfectly well I'm Russian they know they had my passport but just because the passport expired they have all these bureaucratic obstacles and of course it's just because of money because uh, if you just get a passport you have to pay them 91 bucks Canadian but if you have to have them uh, prove your citizenship you have to pay them another 91 bucks Canadian all right so that's how they make money but it just total crazy mindset uh, between the Russian government and the Russian people as compared to Canadian government and Canadian people so it just it was not a good fit so anyway back to the dozer so I went out I took that bag with the with the absorbent and I sprayed some stuff in there and so now once it absorbs all the oil hopefully it doesn't gonna leak anymore maybe uh, I should be able just to swipe it away you know and yeah for 10 bucks I think it's a good deal much better than than buying the, the shop towels It's already 10 o'clock my next stop is um, that uh, old truck stop in Milton 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 Pennsylvania there's a pilot and then there's like a Petro TA but it's ugly it's old uh, half of the shops inside are closed you know like stores but that's pretty much just over two hours from here and the way I chose to go, by the way, is uh, I just like this route. So uh, from Buffalo, they allowed me, because I'm legal height, they allowed me to go on I-90, which is a very rare thing. Because mostly I'm over 13.6. And then I went on 390. And... Uh, and now we're gonna catch uh, 86 and then US 15 so pretty much this spot is kind of like what I usually do when I go to Baltimore right but because Newark is to the east of Baltimore so instead of, instead of going through uh, Duncannon and then Harrisburg as soon as I enter as soon as I reach uh, Williamsburg and I'll be on that uh, what is it uh, I-80 like the bypass around Williamsburg instead of taking 147 all the way down I'll take 80 I 80 East and that 80 East will take me to uh, to the New Jersey line and then there's a couple of uh, couple of highways in there that will take me to the port which is right off uh, I 78 right and so diesel was yeah so it was uh, 379 at the small station 392 at the TA which is still I translated that into Canadian dollars per liter it was like $1.21 Canadian per liter uh, 
when I was fueling up uh, yesterday in, in Canada, the price now was dollar forty, no dollar thirty-seven Canadian per liter. But I get back uh, thirteen percent, so it was actually a bit cheaper in Canada, like probably dollar fifteen after the after the uh, after the HST, the sales tax. But it's still not too crazy like i'm used to these prices like of course american drivers are are crying here but somebody's always always asking about the the fuel what i do if the fuel rises up well i on, on my calculator when i when i'm working on a quote i check like the distance how much time it'll take me to uh, you know i can add the load unload and usually I just with some like big loads I use eight hours so eight hours to load unload cross the border right uh, but now I'm gonna add whenever somebody's asking me for the quote I'm gonna add because based on this experience I'm gonna add let's say three hours I'm gonna give you three hours for free to load three hours for free to unload anything else after that will be uh, detention charge because, yeah I don't care I have I want to see that on the rate confirmation because they never have that and then each time you have to argue with them you know after the fact and then also I want to add uh, on this I want to see on the rate confirmation in black and white the um, the wash so I'm gonna say something like uh, if the shipper slash customer fails to wash the load uh, an additional charge of two hundred dollars will be added to the rate confirmation. And then, last thing I want to add, so that I don't argue with them again, is uh, uh, track audit not used. Because you know, sometimes what happens is that you're driving. Let's say you did two, three hundred miles, and then they call you and they say, "Oh, we're sorry, but the load is canceled." So I want to get $300 US plus $1 for each mile traveled, like when I'm on the way to the shipper. So I drive 100 miles, I'm going to charge you 300 bucks plus $100, dollar per mile, $400. You don't like it? I drop your load in the field. Which of course I'm kidding, I never do that. Nobody likes it when a driver hijacks a load, but it's always better to find a peaceful resolution to an argument. But yeah, so this load taught me something because it doesn't happen too often when you're stuck in, at an auction for two days. And, and since then, you know, they had to drag it on, right? There's this uncertainty. Will I be able to unload? But now that I think I figured out the, what the problem is, basically low level of differential of transmission oil, and I have the oil, all I need to do is just open that tricky cap. I tried it with my fingers, no. I have one of those pipe wrenches, I'm gonna try that one. And I have a small funnel that might work. And so, by the way, that leak is also a good sign because right now it's plus 7 Celsius, right? Which is like, what, 45, 46F? So the temperature uh, these past couple of days was much better. That's why oil, I think oil was frozen over there, you know? Oil got frozen. Maybe they used some uh, improper oil, like something summer type oil. Because there was no leaks. Well, I saw some dirty, dirty spots in there, but there was no active leak where, you know, you see oil dripping. But now I see that. I see oil on the trailer. Liquid, right? And so that can be also a good sign. A sign is that finally the transmission is unfrozen. So all I do now, all I gotta do now is just add some oil, just enough to um, to get the tracks moving. Yeah, like I said, the guy explained to me that there's a valve in there, right? And that valve 
is uh, in in the in the transmission oil compartment so that valve is contingent on the pressure so if there's not enough oil the pressure holds back uh, the shifter and you cannot put it in gear like it's a very simple simple thing but it works so so things look a bit better today but by the way did you notice what's happening why my windshield wipers are moving so what do you think now my truck looks like and the trailer so I just spent 240 bucks Canadian yesterday to wash the truck <laughs> I'm telling you like yeah it's good maybe to wash it like once uh, maybe once a month just for not to get all that salt road salt corroded corrode parts but I cannot wash it every week it's just especially in this in in winter and it's a good thing that we don't have, we didn't have snow right see all this stuff flies off so it's useless your truck looks good long enough just to take some pictures and like one guy said take a picture and and pin it to your visor so that you remember how your truck looks when it's clean yeah unfortunately that's the reality of driving in Canada is that there's nothing you can do yeah you, you'll be dirty if your truck is clean today it'll be dirty tomorrow and I tried calling uh, the port of course the number you're calling is disconnected or you're no longer in service so Google Maps have has uh, no no numbers for that place and I check my paperwork and no numbers there and as a trucker you know you gotta think ahead right one thing I'm thinking about like where am I gonna sleep because New Jersey is notorious for having very few truck stops especially for a truck like mine where I have a four axle trailer you know so normally if this was a legal load I would stop like two hours away somewhere I don't know maybe like in Scranton Pennsylvania and then get up real early and be at the port at 8 o'clock but I cannot drive uh, in the dark because it's uh, still considered an oversized load So I gotta find since I'm pretty sure I'm not gonna be able to deliver today. I think last time I was there they they closed either at three or four. So I wanna deliver first thing tomorrow. And then today I'll focus on uh, loosening loosening that cap on the filler filler tube. Speed trap. We got you, sir. Is he chasing me? No. That same car is mine. Charger. Last guy I talked to, right? He's, I said, what was the fastest speed you ever were, were able to do? in a 5.7 liter charger he said uh, something like 140 150 miles an hour that's pretty good that's like 2 230 k an hour and that's why i was talking about this right uh, cops don't need very powerful cars because he will catch you eventually right he doesn't need a supercharged, you know, Hellcat. Because let's say he catches you, uh, like the, the speed limit here, I think is what, 65? Yeah, 65. Let's say he catches you doing 80, right? They wouldn't like that. 
you you like I got a ticket once, right? I, I was doing 80 in a 65 in a challenge, I got a ticket. Well, let's say somebody's doing 85. But his car can do 140. Right? So he will catch you even if it takes like 20 minutes, 15 minutes, he'll catch you. And that's why that cop I talked to, he said, oh, actually our department in Ohio, our department is thinking that next batch of cars we're gonna buy, they will have a 3.6 3 or 3.7, basically V6. V6, man. So they're getting rid of these big engines, yeah, and uh, looks like Chrysler, or rather, what is it, Stellantis now? They're gonna discontinue cars with big engines. So no more 5.7, no more 6.4, no more Hellcat. That's really sad, you know? But I'm guessing the sales were slipping. But I know for me it makes perfect sense because I don't I'm not a daily driver, right? So I'm just driving when I when I'm back home, I'm driving for fun, you know, two, three days, then I'm back on the road in my super fuel efficient truck. You know, getting uh, getting you know 60 liters per hundred kilometers or uh, 4.5 miles a gallon. Beautiful. So, when I come back to the charger from 60 liters to 10 liters, to me, that feels like a big improvement, right? <laughs> Some people would say, you know, oh man, I want to have 5 liters per 100 kilometers or like 37 miles a gallon. So, no, I'm okay with 10. I'm okay with, uh, what is it, like uh, 20 miles a gallon, 22 miles a gallon because I don't drive it daily. So eventually, probably if they would still cap these uh, cars, eventually my plan was uh, someday in the future still buy a Hellcat, but they're so expensive, you know, and you only gain like one second. Let's say if you, if you put my charger and the Hellcat on this road, let's say the road is empty, we blocked off, you know, 10 kilometers, six miles just for racing. We paid off the governor of New York. Hey, let us use five miles of I-86 for racing. Okay, Captain Sergey. How much? Um, 2,000 bucks for two hours. Deal. And so we put Hellcat on the left. We put my charger 5.7 here. Now we start from the stop and guess what? The road is slippery, right? Uh, big power in the Hellcat requires special tires, otherwise it's just spinning. And so then we measure how fast they accelerate from zero to 60 or zero to 100 kilometers an hour. And, and chances are that the Hellcat, of course, will beat Charger, but it'll be like one second one second difference oh check this out the light is flashing over there you know what that means that means that DOT is sitting in that rest area and they want they want all trucks yep they want all trucks to go in and that's you know, but what's funny is that what they do is the two lights facing these guys right to tell them that they have to go in that those are the main lights but the one the, the one the single light on the back that's for the DOT guy to know that the lights are working you know and so it's funny that when I'm driving from this side so if I see that flashing light I know that the opposite lights are, are on you know but not all of them do it but quite often they have this special signal light on the back So yeah. And the latest news about my beautiful Rowan Tree inlaid 
according is that it's coming but the guys uh, plane was moved uh, departure was moved from December 1st to December 5th which is what today is second right so Thursday so tomorrow three four five so he's leaving Russia on Sunday and so once I deliver this I'm not taking any more loads I've been researching uh, hotels in the Newark New Jersey area so I'm gonna go and voluntarily check in into a facility with a big parking lot and free internet and a beautiful view from the top floor and maybe uh, get myself a mini vacation while that guy is flying over in his plane I'll have a couple of days to uh, roam the New York streets maybe take the New York City maybe take an Uber grab my camera go do some uh, street photography and also a B&H in New York City they have some deals on uh, photo equipment now like I was interested in one lens and now it's like 300 bucks off US which is a big deal and that deal for that big kind of like a wildlife lens you know you need that lens to take pictures of you know birds and alligators in the distance uh, that lens is still no discount in Canada for some reason only this store in the States gives you this huge discount uh, in Canada that lens is still 1700 Canadian over here it's 1100 US and the tiny black and white typeface under the listing says no ship into Canada and so you gotta go there in person and I was thinking of doing that you know uh, because I can trade in my other lens that I don't use the, that often I have that big uh, you know 300 millimeter lens and it's a great lens but it's very limited because it's a, you know it's a prime lens I, I keep changing lenses all the time and they also do trade-in and you can go to the website of this B&H photo and they'll give you a rough idea how much you'll get for that lens and because this 300 millimeter f4 it's actually it's much more expensive than the one I'm thinking about so I found that the trade-in for my lens and I have the proper I have the all the caps I have the um, what do you call it blende in Russian I keep mixing these words but the attachment on the front to prevent the light you know to come in from the side let's say when you're shooting across the Sun basically I got all the accessories and when you have all the accessories uh, B&H will give you 990 bucks for this lens whereas the one I want to buy is $1,100 so if I give them this lens they'll give me this new one and I only have to add you know uh, like a couple hundred dollars so that's what I might do you know because I need that big lens sometimes I see some interesting wildlife I'm driving I see you know like a big eagle somewhere or something and my 300 millimeter is not long enough all right what else what else is a friend of mine who uh, lives in Virginia we were talking about this a while ago about um, like the next step for heavy haul he like yeah I think he had a, he had a 45 ton trailer and I told him I said I wanted to go heavier right and so I traded 55 for a 60 as you know but this guy had his doubts and he just was not sure and so I think he got a 55 ton and he of course the 55 is much lighter than a 60 and so he has a 55 with a booster with a single axle booster but no trail is perfect so now this guy emails me he says hey Sergey I know you talked about uh, selling your trailer 
because I wanted to you know change into something uh, more driver friendly because now I have too much I have to do too much you know kind of like reformatting let's call it like that right like change next change axles change the booster uh, my trailer is not perfect either right and so he emails me he says would you be willing to sell the trailer I said yeah, well yeah I can be persuaded if but I still owe a bunch of money on it I said give me a number and I'll tell you if it works for me or not and he said well I um, I don't need the Jeep and I don't need the booster uh, maybe I would buy I would buy the trailer with uh, with four axles what are you fucking drunk or something look at this guy his wheels were in the zipper and going in when he was passing me Canadian Ontario plate highlight motor motor transport but my French but I just couldn't 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 hold it within and so he says yeah you know I don't I don't wanna go into heavy stuff I said so why do you need a 60 ton I thought you said you did not believe in this stuff and he says well one thing my trailer cannot do is because he went uh, cheap and he bought a fixed trailer like it's not modular like mine is modular that's a very big deal boys and girls just write the word modular on the napkin and put it on the on the fridge modular is the key word in heavy haul you gotta have a modular trailer and so he says I see a lot of loads where where they want to they wanted to have like 30 40 50 feet in the well and he says I don't want to get a extendable trailer because they're very expensive and very heavy right but he says I'm interested in doing light loads but long you know like long and tall maybe but he doesn't want to do heavy he just want to do long like big you know uh, what they call them like a big pieces of like a big cylinder you know kind of deal or a big transformer I said what kind of transformers require 50 feet in the well I like I never saw a transformer like that and he said well it's uh yeah they're not that uh, high but uh, they want like 47 in the well he says he moved them before when he did have a extendable trailer uh, and so anyway he was interested in mine because mine is a modular trailer so he thought maybe he can basically buy my trailer save some money and then buy a five or ten foot deck insert and I said well I'm not sure you know I'm not sure I want to sell the trailer without the Jeep and booster because then I'm stuck with the Jeep and the booster but I told him that this trailer is very heavy right like I told him the truth I said that's one thing that I sometimes regret is that there's all this extra weight because I'm losing uh, you know on the payload side right because uh, I, I'm only allowed let's say uh, you know 156,000 pounds gross in Ontario on eight axles and that's gross so 156 you deduct the empty weight so before it was 53,000 pounds with a 55 ton so I could have moved 103,000 pounds on eight axles with the annual permit now because I'm 60 right 156 minus 60 what is that 96 right 96,000 pounds so if let's say if somebody offers me a hundred thousand pound load uh, I would have to hook up a Jeep but because with a Jeep and a quad trailer in Ontario I'm allowed 78,000 kgs which is what 171,000 pounds uh, but then you have to minus 60 that leaves one 111 but the Jeep is 9,000 pounds one or two 
so you see I'm pretty much coming close to what my old trailer could do but now I'm like uh, 90 feet long maybe what uh, if I without the booster so just the Jeep and a quad in the back uh, oh boy see now they're gonna they're gonna pull me in again there's a rest area and the lights are flashing uh, okay where's my uh, my uh, my New York permit see so I was making I was making fun about that one that side now this side is open all trucks must exit for inspection next right and you see let's check the other the, the single light on the back yep it's flashing And so yeah this guy says uh, probably yeah it's not gonna work because uh, you know I'm guessing he's looking for really something cheap but I told him hey I talked to Fontaine about this I asked him what the trailer like mine costs now brand new with four axles just four axles basic knack the guy says my trailer 60 ton that can be mo modular with a tandem and two flip axles with a basic net knack Hundred and one, no neck extensions. Now cost hundred sixty thousand US. One six zero. Okay. So, so now can be a good time to sell the trailer because the prices are through the roof. But the new ones also went up in price. You know, and that's the problem. Like, oh, I talked to. After I talked to this guy, I talked to uh, uh, XL dealer. Uh, in Ontario because they offer they offer uh, trade-in in they can uh, they can take my Fontaine trailer for a trade-in so like these guys usually yeah, you drive like this and then if you, if they don't start shooting at your tires that means you're free to go see otherwise they have these uh, state troopers here very friendly individuals so if they, if they want to talk to you they will you will know you cannot miss that <laughs> but otherwise if they don't say nothing you just keep driving like this okay, slowly and I find that usually they don't stop uh, oversized guys you know they just they're looking for uh, either flatbed guys or quite often they would stop uh, driving guys or a reefer because I'm guessing they they want to see inside if they're moving something you know illegal uh, I don't know what they're checking but I quite often I see they're stopping driving guys or maybe they'll they just check oh yeah maybe that's why they know that come if it's special if it's a company driver they know that these guys uh, uh, like to drive a lot of miles because they're paid by the mile right and so quite often they would find some inconsistencies in the e-log because these company drivers were the guys who were most uh, hit when the e-log rules came about right like I don't care I don't drive that much but company drivers are you know they were hurting because now you have to stick to so many hours and uh, you cannot you can no longer have like a two or three paper logs you know like they used to <laughs> like some of them would have two log books you know one real one BS um, so yeah maybe that's what they're checking and of course another thing is they check if they see old truck if they see old truck uh, they will check and they will do like a level one inspection because they like old trucks for you know to get some oil leaks Yeah, I just flash my lights at the guy. Go, 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 you know? Because I'm already doing 80 clicks an hour, 50 miles an hour. Like, how slow he wants me to go. 
Okay, this bridge is not good. This is what they call skinny bridge. But the good news is that I'm, I am skinny myself. I mean, my load is barely sticking out beyond the trailer. And so yeah, another interesting thing that you might guys find entertaining is so I call that uh, Trans East. Trans East uh, trailers and they're the dealer for uh, XL trailers in uh, Ontario I talked to them before last year but they I said I'd be interested in doing a trade-in but uh, back then I owed too much money and they were not able to give me a, enough trade-in but the good news about the trade-in is that even though you don't get as much money but you can use your trailer uh, let's say five six months while you're waiting for the new one you know because that's a big deal uh, that's why I called them and they said yeah now the it's uh, six months you have to wait for a new trailer and I said out of, out of curiosity how much is a basic uh, 55 ton XL and they said uh, they said right now it's 103,000 US but he says as soon as the, this is like the old stock when this old stock is um, is gone the prices will go up by 8,000 US to hundred ten thousand dollars so 55 ton from Excel, basic, no options, will be, he says, pretty much count on 110,000 US. And because the trailers are made in US, that's why they like to use US pricing, because when the pricing change, you know, they don't lose money. But of course, then when the time comes to take, uh, you know, take the ownership the contract will be in in Canadian dollars but until the trailer is built it's all US that's how they protect their butt because the Canadian versus US is always fluctuating right and so imagine I still remember the numbers my my uh, Kaufman trailer was 55 ton Kaufman trailer uh, with uh, three axles was 53,000 US then I upgraded to 55 Fontaine with three axles it was uh, 70 73 US and then I got uh, extra axle for 18,000 18,000 so 73 and let's say 20 is what 93 minus 2 91 actually wait a second I forgot did I ask him for I think did I ask him that price he gave me was it for a three axle 55 ton or four axle? I think I asked him for a four axle so then it's not too bad so let's say it was 91 uh, five years ago and now it's 103 and then it's gonna be you know actually wait a second 91 what I paid for a 4 axle Fontaine and now it's gonna be 110 so 20,000 bucks so and that's the problem of course you know it's kind of like real estate right you're living in a house and let's say you bought that house for a hundred thousand bucks now all of a sudden your house is worth four hundred thousand dollars so you're so happy okay you sell your house you think you're thinking I'm gonna buy a bigger house and you're gonna look for a bigger house and guess what now that house that costs let's say twice as much as yours where yours was hundred thousand and the, and then you, the big one you, you couldn't afford was two hundred thousand now you sell yours for four hundred but that big house now is eight hundred thousand <laughs> Because, yeah, your house went up in price, but the new one you want to buy is doubled in price as well. And the same thing with the trailers, right? Yeah, I can sell my trailer probably for more 
than when I paid for it. But the new ones, the new ones went up in price. You know? So I'm not sure. But one thing I was thinking about is that so let's say if this guy from Virginia decides to buy my trailer with four axles. That still leaves me my Jeep. And that leaves me... Uh, the Jeep can work with any trailer, right? So let's say Excel, Trail King, Fontaine, right? Because it's just a fifth wheel connection. Doesn't matter. You just need a long enough neck. But the flip axles, they are Fontaine. The connectors are... Uh, specific for a Fontaine 55 or 60 ton trailer but that's a f uh, it'll fit a 55 ton as well because that's what that flip axle is called it's called 55 slash 60 and so let's say if I were to buy sell this one and buy a 55 ton trailer just like what I had before uh, I could use the Jeep and I could use the booster, kind of like three plus one, you know? And the trailer would be 7,000 pounds lighter. <laughs> you know, when, let's say for loads like this, right? When I'm just, I don't need the, when I don't need the, I don't need the Jeep and Stinger. So I'll, I would be 7,000 pounds lighter. You know, that's a big deal. Um, but the problem is uh, the, the neck. You know, the neck on a 55 ton, they still give you 101,000 pounds and, I mean, 101 inch. And they have connectors. But I'm pretty sure that those connectors are not going to work with my with the neck I have now because a, a 55 ton uh, neck is different than a 60 ton neck and actually I wanted to, to call Fontaine and ask him about this because some manufacturers you know they allow you to change the neck let's say you want to buy um, a 55 ton trailer but you want to have a 60 ton neck because I read about this before. I, I remember reading on a forum, one guy was saying, yeah, we bought a 55 ton with a 60 ton neck. And I couldn't understand back then, I couldn't understand why, but now I know why. Because uh, a 60 ton, these new ones, before they also, they, they would only give you 101 inch neck. But now the new 60 ton, they call it HD. Fontaine 60 ton HD. It comes with, I forgot, either 107 or 110 swing radius. And then you can get that, um, you can get the um, the neck extension. And then my, my flip box, the 83 inch flip box would work with that one. You know, but I don't know, like Fontaine, they were never a big fan of, of uh, customization. They always like this cookie cutter you know, type of a deal. But I'm, I would be really curious because that's what I would really, you know, it would help me a lot if I have a longer neck, uh, the longer base neck. 101 is too short, like I always say, I would love to have, let's say, even 107, 107, and I would carry that big neck on the top, or maybe just hook it up to the Jeep and keep it with the Jeep, but you see, then, with that scenario, I would I would gain 7,000 pounds because my trailer now is lighter, right? And I could get that trailer with a with a let's say 28 foot uh, deck, let's say drop side rail, you know. So that's something you know. I'm driving. That's what I'm I'm thinking about how to basically how to make more money. How to make more money, how to get to the top, how to increase my revenue. Uh, I'm always thinking about this. That's why I was good in sales. I was always knew how to focus on, you know, what makes me the most money. Like, of course, number one method would be to move to US. 
believe it or not, my trailer, don't change a thing, uh, get a green card for US, and my revenue would go like this. But I cannot do it. I cannot do it. I don't have relatives in the States. I'm not an athlete. You know, remember what I started this ramble about, you know, in the beginning? I'm not a lawyer. I'm not a doctor. I'm not a singer. I'm not a dancer. Well, actually, I'm a musician, but I don't think I would qualify as an outstanding performer, you know, and get like, okay, <laughs> that would be funny, right? I cannot immigrate to the US as a trucker because like I mentioned the trucking occupation is considered basically a basic occupation you cannot get that H1 B1 visa but as a musician let's say I find some theater in US that's willing to hire me and give me a visa to you know work and live in the states for three years that would be funny but then i cannot be a trucker like i can only be a garmoshka player accordion player and so far i only know three songs like a short piece of three songs so i don't think i would qualify <laughs> as a as an accordion player for a b1 h1 visa so yeah and that, since I cannot immigrate to US, so that leaves um, the, the other routes, right? Maybe making my trailer lighter, or maybe finding a way of uh, getting a deck insert, make the deck longer so I can do, I can do longer loads. There was some dead animal on the road. So anyway, that's one good thing about trucking, right? You have lots of time to think about things, you know? And so, a lot of truckers actually are pretty interesting people. They come from different fields in their previous lives. I knew a guy who was an engineer in his home country. I knew a guy who was a pilot in his home country. And then he came to Canada, he became a trucker. I said, why you don't want to be a pilot? And he said, well, it's too expensive to get that license here. Okay. Then I know one guy who was a doctor, I think. And the game say, again, same reason, his English is not too good. He cannot get, uh, you know, he cannot get certified as a doctor. So he became a trucker. So there's a lot of smart people, actually, believe it or not, working as truckers for one reason or another. so yeah that's why we, we 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 drive and we think about things and we try to figure out a way how to improve our way of life all right i'm i'm, I'm probably gonna end this ramble at the pa border uh, we are seven miles away mile marker seven so this is uh US 15 or also known as I-99 oh the Sun is coming up maybe we're gonna lose this rain here I'll stop at that Lawrenceville, I don't know. Because I think this one has more food. I, I think the one I'm going next, that uh, Flying J over there in Milton, it's a really bare track stop. The, the parking is not very good. Here, as soon as you cross into PA, there's a small Exxon uh, track stop. It's not very big either, but usually at this time of the day, it should be empty, so I can I can get in and back in with my dozer. I thought I 
filled up DAF yesterday. What's going on here? Oh no, I forgot. Son of a gun. Okay, I see my DAF now is less than half. So yesterday when I was at the Flying J, I got... I only filled up uh, a little bit of fuel in the dozer. And I forgot about the DAF. And I don't remember if this... Uh, I don't remember if this uh, Lawrenceville truck stop has DEF in there at the pump. Maybe it does. If it does, I'll stop there and get some DEF. It's official south 99 before they would say future future i-99 now they change all signs to it says us 15 i-99 so this part basically the one that connects pennsylvania with i-86 is now i-99 why did they have to do that i don't understand maybe they they, they, they felt like they wanted to make some fresh signs like, what was wrong with the US-15? Well, you're, that's your tax dollars at work. Uh, adding, adding more signs. incident I had in Kentucky where the pickup truck hit me damaged my tires so that the, the, they hired a lawyer to try to get some money out of my insurance company so I, I emailed my insurance company so because they're claiming that I hit them She hit me from the back at 100 miles an hour and I hit them. Yeah, sure. I, I was backing on a freeway and I hit you. And so I emailed my insurance company. I said, this is a bogus claim. Uh, just get the computer for my pickup truck. If it recorded anything, if it recorded the speed the pickup truck was traveling at, you will see that I'm not lying. But you know, that's what happens. Uh, everybody's after big trucks. They hit uh, the, even though it's their fault, 100%, they wanna try to get money out of the carry, out of the truck trucking company. And so I emailed the insurance company, said, yeah, it's not me, don't pay them anything. And so they emailed me back, they said, okay, we hired a lawyer on your behalf who will help you. And then my phone rings and I see some lady from Kentucky and she says hey Sergey your insurance company hired me to to represent you and I said who's paying for this and she says well part of your monthly premium of 2500 Canadian is actually for a defense attorney 
I said, yeah, that's better be. I'm paying almost 30,000 a year Canadian. And she says, yeah, so you, you, don't, you don't have to pay us, so we're gonna, we're gonna send you a letter, we're gonna ask you for some paperwork, but we're gonna, we're gonna fight this. And I said, wait, so are you representing the insurance company because they don't wanna pay, or are you representing me? And she said, no, we're representing you. We're gonna be your attorney versus the attorney who represents the pickup truck that you say hit you. I said, that damn right it hit me. So anyway, so I'm protected on that front. And then of course in, in January, three days before my birthday, I have to be in Maryland To, uh, to see the nice judge about that overweight ticket I got like a year ago. And finally they are ready for the court. So, uh, look at this crazy people, man. So yeah, this was not a very good year. Uh, too much legal BS, you know. All right, uh, let me just remember my mileage. 328-125, 328-125. And you see the big sign on the right says, welcome to Pennsylvania, pursue your happiness. All right, let's go pursue our happiness at the first exit. Okay, 328-125, 328-125. I'm still writing down my my mileage even though now I'm using my e-log because it, it tracks all my miles in each jurisdiction so I'm no longer using my uh, these little notebooks I have here but I still like to write it down in case something happens with the e-log so the guy passed me just to go to the exit that I'm taking, you know? But I'm guessing, yeah, I was driving too slow. That's why I had my flashing lights on. And so he didn't like me. guys to leave before I can turn you know actually the truck stop is it's probably only a couple of spaces left I don't feel like working hard today because I, already, I was already running around, you know, searching for that oil and checking the dozer. And since I cannot deliver today anyway, and I'm trying to remember, do these guys have death or not? always exciting over here to back you know because on the one hand you have these guys over here the huge posts
That's how you back from the blind side. Too much. <laughs> As usual. It's either too much or not enough. going properly It's a very difficult back because you see you have to be angled like this way and especially when you have a long long trailer like mine and you got to be careful here because in the back there's a, a, a ditch so you don't want to You don't want to fall into that one. All right, this one has a, this guy has a couple of farm tractors over here. Tandem step deck, big spread, but I see he has a slider. And the trailer is a load king. And he's from, he's from uh, Quebec. Because I see the bottom number is it says PQ, oh, like what he has USDOT VIN PQ, which means Province Quebec. So I probably got loaded somewhere in in uh, Baltimore or maybe even like Newark. And one thing to remember about these, if they are over ten thousand pounds that's considered heavy machinery you cannot use one chain on the front one chain on the back like what some people do to to um, you know they use one chain but they use two binders and then if a cop stops them you know you can get a ticket because you need to use four chains one on each corner once I get a ticket how do I know because once I get a ticket I had a tractor like this and it was maybe like 15,000 pounds, so I put two chains in the back, but in the front there was only one connection there, so I put one long chain like this. And the guy that's in, the, in Canada stops me and says, you don't have enough tie dolls. I'm like, what the heck are you talking about? Well, it's, uh, what's the weight? I said, 15,000 pounds. Well, it's heavy machinery, must have four separate tie dolls, sir. So he gave me a big, gave me a big ticket, well, not very big, but he took me out of service. Gave me OOS out of service for five minutes. He says, if you can attach another, another tie down, but I'm putting you out of service. And of course, OOS, it's a huge deal. When I, back then I was a, I was a Landstar driver. And Landstar, as soon as they hear about OOS, they have a collective heart attack. Basically, the buildings are falling down. There's you know, like lightning in the sky, you know. And they call me 20 times, you know, basically, you can lose your contract because of this, but we're gonna let it slide this time. And they sent me to, uh, to their uh, yard in Florida to get retrained. And I spent three days relearning how to chain. <laughs> 
this was like 2015 or something so so trust me guys when i say something about chaining and how many chains and where to put them i know what the heck i'm talking about okay because i had tickets i had training and so unless unless they catch you quite a few guys they know they just put one chain two binders hey nobody will notice right but lights are flashing you pull in the guys does a level one inspection they're not stupid okay what is that is that a single chain with two binders okay come over here so anyway we're gonna end this uh, super long video over here i know you guys love these long videos but now it's we're just coming close to a full feature film format <laughs> So Hollywood, Hollywood move over, Captain Sergei is coming.